thanks for checking out Chemistry Connections on the Hopewell Valley Student Podcasting Network, a proud partner of HVSPN.com, where students come together to publish content to share with the world. The opinions represented within this episode are those of the content creators only. Please enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to Chemistry Connections episode number 9. I'm your host Andrew and today we'll be discussing the chemistry behind mayonnaise. Let's get started by defining what mayo is. So mayo is made of oil, egg yolks, and a water-based acid which normally comes in the form of vinegar or lemon juice. It's an essential spread in American cuisine today for sandwiches or burgers, it's also used in coleslaw, and in Europe more often people will dip french fries in mayonnaise. Mayo is also known for being a polarizing food. The interesting about this podcast is that I actually don't like eating mayo, although I've tried really hard to use it in different applications because I know that other people and the chefs that I follow really do swear by mayo. One application that they always suggest is using it as a replacement for butter when you're making a grilled cheese sandwich, but I don't really like the texture or the flavor of mayo. Mayo is an emulsion, which is a mixture of immiscible fluids. Those are ones that do not dissolve in one another. So emulsions are achieved by finely dispersing one liquid into tiny droplets, which are going to then be suspended in the other. These suspensions only last temporarily. Think about shaking oil and vinegar together to make vinaigrette. It'll slowly separate after a little while. And most common emulsions that we see and eat daily are going to be between oil and water. These include milk, butter, ice cream. Each one has a stable balance of water and fat, which normally wouldn't mix. We should first understand why oil and water don't mix, right? If you remember as a kid thinking that all liquids were just going to mix, but then you saw in science class that when they put the oil and the water in a cup, not only do they not mix, the oil rises to the top, and then your teacher tells you that it's because oil is less dense than water, and you still didn't really get it because you thought that all liquids were going to mix together um, normally. Oil at the molecular level is a triglyceride. It's formed from glycerol and three fatty acid molecules. And fatty acids are long chains made of carbon and hydrogen atoms. We know that fatty acids are going to be nonpolar because hydrocarbon chains have symmetrically arranged bonds around them. And so that makes the entire triglyceride molecule essentially nonpolar. On the other hand, we know that water molecules, or H2O, have a high net dipole moment because of the difference in electronegativity between the hydrogen and oxygen which are bonded together. That'll result in a partial negative charge on the oxygen atom versus a partial positive charge on the hydrogen side of the molecule. So since oil is a nonpolar molecule, it'll form London dispersion forces. On the other hand, polar water molecules are going to experience hydrogen bonding due to the especially electronegative oxygen to hydrogen bond. And so when you try to mix them, the solute solvent interactions that result are dipole induced dipole forces between the nonpolar and polar molecules. These aren't strong enough to overcome the intermolecular forces within the oil and within the water, which means that we're not going to see any solubility. This is where emulsifiers come in. These substances stabilize the suspension of little oil droplets in water or vice versa so that they don't separate as quickly. Emulsifiers are molecules that have two ends, allowing them to form a bridge between the insoluble liquids. And a metaphor that I like to think about is if you consider the oil and water as two separate friend groups at a party that won't mix. The emulsifier is someone who's kind of involved with both friend groups so that they can force each other to talk and even if they were initially resistant they'll get them all partying at the end of the night. One portion is lipophilic which means it's oil attracting. That section of the molecule is nonpolar and it's made of a hydrocarbon chain which will form London dispersion forces with the oil molecules and the other end is hydrophilic. That part of the molecule is polar or ionic, so we're, we know that it will make ion dipole or dipole dipole forces with the water molecules when you mix them together. The resulting solute solvent forces are now strong enough to overcome the solute solute or solvent solvent interactions, and when this happens, the emulsifier molecules form physical barriers around little droplets to prevent them from coalescing and breaking the emulsion. 
Now that we know the chemistry behind emulsions, we can return to the food that brought us here in the first place, mayo. I know that I said I don't really like mayo, and that's true, but I've always been interested in how it's made because I've watched chefs turn like oil and eggs and water into this thick, it changes color too, it changes to white, which has already really fascinated me. Water in mayonnaise comes from lemon juice or vinegar, while the egg yolks provide the emulsifier molecule. The emulsifier molecule that exists in egg yolks is called lecithin, which is a phospholipid. Phospholipids have those hydrophilic and lipophilic ends that we talked about, so they'll help to stabilize the emulsion when you mix the water in the lemon juice with the oil that you're going to add. Then the next step to making mayo is to slowly stream in oil, and you need to constantly whisk throughout the entire process in order to disperse the oil into tiny little droplets. At the beginning, a lot of recipes will emphasize to you that you need to add the oil drop by drop, and this is actually a pretty serious and oftentimes necessary part of the process because at the beginning, of the emulsion hasn't really formed. So any amount of oil that you add too quickly or all at once is going to overwhelm the mixture and the emulsion will just break. So the oil and the water are going to be left separate and looking really gross. The purpose of slowly streaming it in is that you can make the emulsion stable at the beginning and then once that occurs, you can add oil a little bit faster so that all of the oil and the water form and emulsify together, making this thick spread. A lot of the chefs that I watch on like MasterChef or Top Chef, you have to make mayo and a lot of them panic when they break it because they've added the water too quickly. By adding more liquid oil, this is a really fun fact that I learned about mayonnaise, you're going to in fact make the mixture thicker because it becomes more difficult for the water molecules to flow as they surround more and more oil droplets. So you would think that adding a liquid to a solid is going to make it thin out, it's going to make it more runny, but in fact the ability to flow of a mixture like mayo comes from how much the water molecules can move around in it. As you add more and more oil, the water molecules that are surrounding them become stretched thinner and thinner, so they lose that ability to flow and the mixture is going to become a lot more viscous. So super interesting things about mayo, it's actually an emulsion that occurs when the water becomes suspended really tightly around oil molecules. Thank you for listening to this episode of Chemistry Connections. For more student-ran podcasts and digital content, make sure that you visit www.chvspn.com.